Hello and welcome back to my channel. So I am going to just apologise in advance for possibly pretty poor sound quality. I am, if you can't tell, not where I normally am. I'm not at my home in the south. I'm actually at my family home in the northeast, hence why there is a really poorly little bear behind me who has come to join me for today's video. Um, obviously the video is a little bit related with the double header in F1. I just haven't had the time. Um, it's been a little bit hectic, but hey oh, we get there. Yeah, so I forgot my um, some of the mic attachments, hence why sound quality might be a little bit off, so I apologise. However, let's just get straight into, just having to get my notes up because I can't remember what I've written and who I have. Um, let's get into who I have for my top five moments or what I have for my top five moments from the Indonesian Grand Prix. So first up, I have the KTM Resurgence. So it's been a pretty good couple of opening rounds for KTM. They obviously had that podium with Brad and they had um, Miguel's win. So it's really nice to actually see um, KTM I can't believe she left me after a stroke there. <laughs> um, it's really nice to see KTM actually starting to come and be fighting at the front again because it was getting a little bit disheartening watching them fight at the back when they are such an amazing team and just having these like flashes in the pan of these good moments. So they were like one of, I, I really enjoyed seeing them being back at the front, back on the podium and they're now, I think, think, if I remember rightly, um, they're leading the team's championship, which is mega. And I really look forward to seeing how they do for the rest of the year, because I hope this is actually a sign of things to come rather than just another flash in the pan, a couple of races of good results, and then they're back to, unfortunately, fighting in the back with uh, not where they're supposed to be. They should be at the front with the likes of Yamaha and Honda and big teams. So let's hope that this is actually a sign of things to come. So second, I have Carlos Tatai's maiden podium. I was so happy for Carlos because he's such a lovely, such a lovely little guy. He's had some horrible injuries. That's been absolutely plagued by injuries since he joined. It was just, it was really nice to see him be able to be fighting at the front. I mean, he went from pole, then he got um he got that pole, which was fantastic. But he also got a podium, which was amazing to see. And it was such a boost for Proustel as well, because they have obviously been through so much within the last uh, two, well, last couple of years with the passing of Jason. And it's nice for them as a team to be able to celebrate something like that, like a, like his pole position and his podium. And Proustel had such a good run with Marco Bedzecki in uh, 2018. So it is nice to see them be able to be back out the front and be be in amongst the um, the front running front running pack. So I hope that this is also them coming back to being where they belong. And I would love for another year of Proustel machines just fighting for victories and fighting for podiums and be back in amongst it partially for nostalgia reasons because uh, 2018 was when I really like fully got into my love for Motor 3 um, and Bez was actually one of the, was the first rider who I started sporting hence why I have such a soft spot for Marco. So for nostalgic reasons and my own personal selfish reasons I would love Chris Dell to be fighting in the front again. So third, third's quite a lengthy one but Third has to be how amazing the Moto3 rookies were in Indonesia. Like, obviously, they're all on the same level playing field. None of them had been to this track before. So they kind of, all of them were going in blind, veterans, whatever. But so many of them got points. So many of them. Obviously, there was the absolutely amazing um, performance from Diogo Moreira to get on the front row as well as Mario Aji. Aji obviously hometown favourite, uh, hometown hero so it was fantastic. I mean Jesus Christ like a rock star reception for Aji. It was it, it sounded unreal. I don't know if anyone's seen any of the videos, any of the pictures of it but the Indonesian crowds were just unbelievable with 
everyone from, from MotoGP and my already being an Indonesian rider, it was just, it was something else. So I'll just quickly go through where the rookies actually finished. So Bartolini was the highest scoring rookie. He finished eighth with eight points, uh, followed by Holgado in ninth. Scott Ogden got a 13th place. Aji finished in 14th and Bertelli finished in 15th. It was it was quite um, heartbreaking for Moreira to have that technical issue on on the grid, so he had to, so he couldn't actually start from his position, um, and it was a little bit, it's a bit sad to see Adji not be able to keep pace with the others. But it's the second race in, and I I can't really, I'm not expecting people to come into it like Pedro Acosta did. I mean, between Pedro and Raúl, rookies like that, I think. Uh, one in a million and I don't expect it to happen every year so hence why everyone was a bit like whoa when it happened so I think when they don't come into it like that and they do actually show like their improvement their learning and all this I think I do kind of enjoy that more but it obviously doesn't take anything away from what Pedro and Raul did last year in like Moto3 and Moto2 so it was a pretty fantastic weekend for the rookies and I really was completely blown away by uh, what Moreira did to get on the front row. I mean, I, he was just not on my radar. I mean, he was obviously on Maverick Vinales' radar. I don't know how. But he wasn't on my radar to be one of these people who'd be fronting, fighting at the front. So he might actually, going into the season, he might actually be one to watch. Which would be very interesting. I really look forward to seeing how the Moto3 lot do because... As much as it's kind of been dominated by Foggia and the Aspar boys, you've got so many other characters going on in, in that paddock and on that grid that they could really be a bit of a, a wild card result. So I'm really looking forward to the rest of the year. So number four, I have Jake Dixon's Maiden Podium. So if you... I don't know. I don't know if anyone's ever seen. I have a lot of love for the Dixons, both Jake and Sarah. Um, they're both absolutely wonderful people, joyous, absolute dolls to talk to, and I'm so happy to see Jake just improving race by race. I mean, he had that had a couple of had some difficult years. He had the concussion. He's had injuries that could have ended his career, and it's just nice to see him go back to the to Aspar and just be like he's going home he's completely happy with the team he's so comfortable with them and it's really nice to be able to see him be able to build on the experience that he's got now and go back to a team where he knows everyone from when he was there in uh, 2019 2019 got completely went on my head uh, who knows everyone from when he was there in, in 2019 he's comfortable with them he's comfortable with his teammates and I can't wait to see him be able to be to be on the podium because it's coming I look forward to seeing Jakey on the podium because it'll be a bit of a wild party <laughs> and last but not least I have Song Kiat Chantra's maiden win because wow first ever tie rider plus the interview he gave in Park Verme, I mean, it was like the middle of the night, early morning in the UK, and I did not have a singular regret for being up after watching that interview. It was just the best thing in the entire world. I just, you get also so many like scripted PR interviews in Park Verme where they're like, oh, I can thank my team, I want to thank all these people, da, 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 da. and it's like, you, you give the same old, oh, we were pushing, we did this, the tires were great, blah, 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 blah. I don't know about you, but I hate those interviews. But Chantra's interview was just so heartfelt, it was lush, and it was just, oh, there was nothing I didn't love about it. I was so happy for him. And he's such a smiley, lovely guy. I loved it. I was my absolute, my absolute pinnacle highlight of the weekend was that interview. Loved it. I loved everything about it. Anyway, so that is my top five moments from uh, the Indonesian Grand Prix. Apologies that it is so late. Um, hopefully I'll be able to get the Argentina one um, out a bit sooner. And I will see you all for the Argentine... Argentine? 
Argentinian? The Argentinian Grand Prix Roundup. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you are enjoying any of my videos and subscribe and uh, also drop me a comment down below uh, with any video suggestions that you want to see or what your top five moments from the Indonesian Grand Prix were. And I will see you all for the Argentine Grand Prix Roundup.